get there. So the materials in those materials may be on the test. So um, what I'm going to talk about, we were stuck with network basics, how computer network works, how internet works, uh, the network architecture, internet architecture, and uh, the language uh, computers used to talk with each other in the network. That is called uh, the protocols. And uh, we will also go over some uh, security basics, like uh, security goals, security concepts, what we are trying to achieve uh, in security. Uh, after that, we will talk about uh, crypto algorithms, uh, including uh, symmetric crypto, hash, MAC, HMAC, and uh, asymmetric crypto. Like I said, uh, we're not going to talk about the detail all those algorithms work, that's more like the properties. The most interesting part of this class uh, is, I believe, is this, we're going to study the security issues in the network protocols. So we will start from the uh, data link layer, ARP, uh, ICMP, and uh, the, the network layer vulnerabilities in IP, and uh, transport layer, TCP, and also application layer, uh, DSN, DNS. And if you don't know uh, what those work in, that matter, don't worry. We will, we will cover that. And uh, after that, we are going to use what we learned in security basics and uh, crypto uh, to build some uh, countermeasures to defend uh, all kinds of attacks. So before that, we are going to do labs to to do those kinds of uh, experiments, attack experiments. So we are going to cover IPsec, uh, transport layer security, EMSSEC, and uh, we will also talk some uh, high level uh, network defense mechanisms and uh, techniques, uh, firewall and uh, intrusion detection systems. We will have two lab assignments for you uh, to do that. And uh, I will also cover some uh, uh, emergent security topics. And uh, uh, for example, like uh, software defined networking security, uh, wireless security, uh, hardware assisted uh, network security. So um, my research area is more like a hardware assisted uh, operating system security. But the, even the network devices, they have their own operating system. So we are going to talk about how we how we are building those uh, security features, security primitives in hardware. So actually, uh, Intel has been very active right now to uh, add security features in, in their new CPUs. Also, uh, um, they are doing that. And we're also going to talk about some authentication. Uh, that's, that's a very interesting topic as well. So everything in this class, you will be able to find uh, on the blackboard. Uh, right now, I think that I only upload the uh, uh, syllabus. Uh, but uh, in, the, in the future, I will upload uh, lecture, lecture notes, uh, the video, uh, reading materials, um, and also uh, homework, uh, lab description. And uh, I also enabled the discussion board for you. So you can use it for the uh, discussion of lab assignments. So you can also access your grade, everything else there. Okay, I guess this is a part you really care about. Um, we will have uh, three homework, um, just uh, questions and answers, uh, no programming homework. So each for five points, seven lab assignments, 45 points, uh, they are really important. Uh, basically, by doing those lab assignments, uh, you are going to uh, you are going to uh, learn what I teach in this class. So uh, we will have a midterm exam 
ten points if you were made in class only in fifteen minutes, and a final for uh, twenty points. I will also give uh, five uh, quizzes, two for each, and there will be five uh, random attendance check. So if you come here every week, you get like five bonus points. You will get a A plus if your <coughs> final score is greater than like a seven, A greater than like it, and uh, eighty seven for B plus, eighty for B. And you can fail this class if your final score is lower than sixty. So uh, for all the homework lab reports, uh, please submit through the uh, blackboard and uh, please use a text editor. Word or the tag. Uh, I prefer the tag, but it's not required uh, to complete all your homework and uh, lab reports. And um, we do not accept handwritten submissions. So for each homework, okay. Uh, can we scan and everything in the printable document? No, it would be better if you use a word or the tag. Because it will make the TS job much harder. Yeah. So for each homework, there will be three. Each homework, you will have uh, one week to finish each homework. Uh, we will announce the homework in class, and also you can see the announcement uh, on Blackboard. Uh, the TA will send you an uh, email. And, uh, for each lab assignment, uh, you have two weeks to finish. So, so I think uh, the first assignment will be deployed uh, next week, and you have two weeks. And the last assignment <coughs> will be due almost the last day of the semester. So due dates will be posted in advance and also announced in the class. And the TA will send out uh, reminders uh, when it is posted and uh, when it is due. So for each day, a lab assignment and homework is late, 20% deduction will be assessed, and the late submission after two days will not be accepted. So the most important part of the lab assignment, for each lab assignment, you are required to produce a report. And uh, this report should be as comprehensive as possible. You should have a step-by-step -step description uh, with screenshots of how you conduct uh, this experiment. So basically, anyone who reads your report should be able to uh, replicate your experiment. Because uh, the reason for this is right now we don't have an automatic reading system for the labs, but uh, we are working on it. But for now, uh, this, is a, this is the best way. So more information detail regarding uh, maps, you will, you will find uh, in this map assignment, general requirement and uh, instructions. I will upload this um, next Monday or Tuesday. So the map system we are going to use is called uh, uh, ThoughtSnap. It is actually uh, still under development, um, but it's ready for this class. And uh, I think the previous computer network security class and even network security class, uh, they are using this system. So some of you may be familiar with this. Um, so you, were, uh, you don't need to uh, register in this uh, system. Uh, the TA will add all of you to this system. So uh, early next week, you will receive uh, an email which, uh, which is about how to activate your account in this system. Uh, and uh, this is a, a web-based system, so uh, you can access uh, it anywhere with your own laptop. Uh, and you just need to launch your browser, type in this URL, and uh, you're good to go. So each of you will have a set of virtual machines in this system. It depends on uh, the lab requirements. Some, some Labs uh, may need three VMs, some may need four, um, and uh, you will not be able to see others' virtual machines. You can only see yours. Uh, so 
the password for the source map is the is the password that really matters. So when you receive this email, uh, please um, activate your account and uh, uh, change your uh, change your default password. So my suggestion to you is to start uh, working on the lab assignment as early as possible. Don't wait until the due date. And uh, like I said before, the first lab will be deployed uh, before next uh, Friday. So um, I will use the first lab assignment or example to give you a sense how this system works. So the first lab we are going to do uh, is about uh, setting up uh, network services in this uh, in this map system. So this is a warm up assignment for you to get familiar with uh, the full map system and also virtual machines. Uh, you are going to set up a web server in one of the server machines and uh, a DNS server in the gateway machines. And uh, there is no uh, programming and uh, th this map actually there is no uh, security involved there. So uh, after this, um, six more lamps, uh, scanning and uh, sniffing, teach you how to use uh, reconnaissance tools and uh, TCP IP attack. Uh, you are going to do all kinds of uh, uh, spoofing attacks uh, on TCP and uh, IP layer. And uh, we have a hot fleet attack. So how many of you heard of hot fleet? Cool. So, Hotfleet was a vulnerability discovered in 2014, maybe? 14. So, uh, it was discovered in an uh, open source project, OpenSSL. So, it is supposed to be a, a secure foundation for all SSL. However, there, there is a bug, and that bug will cause a lot of computers, web servers using that website, uh, using that library vulnerable. So in this lab, we are going to deploy a vulnerable uh, web server for you to attack. So uh, hopefully they are not, uh, there are no hot bleed vulnerability in wired right now, but uh, uh, we, we are going to replicate that. And uh, we also have a DNS attack lab, and that will be after midterm. Also, you will learn firewalls by configure, configuring IP tables and uh, intrusion detection system map. So uh, all those seven maps, you are now required to do much programming. Maybe a little bit uh, scripting, but uh, not really programming. You are not going to write a C program using uh, any uh, C APIs. So if you log in this source map after you receive the email from the PAs, uh, this will be the workspace for you. And uh, you can see here there is a <coughs> My Maps. If you click My Maps, you will you will see <coughs> all the you will see all the maps that are available <coughs> to you. Uh, so next week you are going to see one, which is our first map. And uh, by clicking actions, you can see uh, lab contents and uh, lab environments. So in lab contents, we have a, a description of uh, what this lab is about. The requirements, the goal, uh, what are you supposed to uh, include in your final report. And by clicking this lab environment, you can actually access this map. Uh, it will show this network uh, topology picture here. Can you see it? So, for example, in the first map, we are going to have uh, three computers. We are going to have a gateway, uh, a client, and a server. And there will be three switches. And the gateway is uh, uh, connected to internet through a router. And you are going to uh, configure the gateway and uh, so the other two computers can also uh, access the internet, so you can download the software for those two computers, and uh, also you are going to set up the web server uh, on this machine, and uh, use browser for other tools to collect to 
this web server. So if your mouse hovers over one VM on this, on this topology, you can see the uh, status of that VM. For example, in this case, the gateway is actually on three different networks. It has three different uh, network adapters. Uh, and it is running, it's active, and uh, there are several buttons available here. This one is for you to uh, remotely control the VM. And there are buttons for uh, reboot, uh, shutdown the machine. So uh, you, you will get familiar with this. So after, uh, if you click the remote control button, it will bring up this uh, web page. So uh, you will be able to access each virtual machine. And uh, for all the virtual machines we are using Ubuntu, and uh, they have the same account name, which is saved. And the password is just a D E E S. You don't have to write it down. We will uh, include that uh, in the uh, instructions. So uh, basically, you don't have to change the password for those virtual machines because they are only available to you. Your peers will not be able to see your virtual machines. And you need those passwords uh, not only for logging, but also install some uh, privileged uh, applications. Some, uh, some of the network applications you need the uh, uh, root privilege. So how many of you are using Ubuntu or used the Ubuntu before? That's great. Yeah. So um, then you should be very familiar with this. So this is just uh, the same as your uh, desktop or laptop. Okay, for the quizzes, we will have uh, five in-class quizzes, 10 minutes each, and uh, I will not notify you in advance. And uh, so you have to show up, and there's no makeup. And uh, midterm, 15 minutes in-class, and uh, you may be excused from midterm or the final uh, with a very good reason. And, uh, you will have uh, one chance to take a makeup exam if uh, you are excused. Okay, so last but not least, academic uh, integrity. So, um, so any kind of uh, cheating in homework, lab assignment, and exams uh, is subject to serious penalty. So to understand your responsibility, you should read the student code of conduct and uh, academic integrity policy. So all the university, college, and department uh, policies will be strictly enforced. No, any violation will result in zero in your homework, assignment, um, quiz, and will be reported to the dean's office. And uh, you are allowed to discuss Lab assignment, uh, and you can use the blackboard to do that. So um, I noticed that m maybe how many how many of you took any computer network class before? Okay, maybe just ten. So how many of you took any computer security class before? Okay, maybe maybe fifteen. So for most of you. This will be your first computer network class and also your first computer security class. So this is, this is kind of weird. I think this is a problem in our curriculum design. It's not your fault. So, so uh, what I'm going to do is I will uh, try to cover the network basics and the security basics as much as possible so you can understand uh, uh, what computer network security is really about. And uh, I believe most of you in this class are seniors. I think there are maybe 90, 90 uh, senior students, maybe five or six junior, and uh, two graduate students. Yeah. Any questions? No questions? Okay. So how many of you are coming back next week for the class? 
<laughs> That's cool. <laughs> So, um, okay. Um, today, let's talk about some uh, computer network uh, basics. Um, so, what is a computer network? So, basically, uh, a network, a computer network, is consisted with two or more computers, and they are linked together to share resources files, basically they're just trying to uh, do some electronic communications. So um, like all other computer systems, there is hardware and the software. So computer network system is the same. We are going to talk about uh, computer network hardware and also computer network softwares in this class. But for the security side, we are mainly focusing on the software and one special kind of software, which is the program, the language they are speaking. So then why is the internet? So a computer network is not necessarily the internet, right? So the internet is just a, 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 a network of networks. So it's a special kind of computer network. It joins uh, all the government, universities, uh, your laptops, and uh, companies, uh, web services, web servers together, so we can use all kinds of uh, uh, services. So this is a definition given by, given by William Snatter. He was a president for the uh, Chicago chapter of uh, Internet Society. So Internet Society is still very active. Uh, so there is a conference, security conference called Network secure. What 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 is NDSS? You know what does NDSS short for? Uh, yeah. Network design. Network and distributed Oh, networking distributed system. Distributed system. Security. Okay. So th that I that conference NDSS is like one of the four most uh, uh, important uh, security conferences and. Uh, that conference is uh, sponsored by this uh, internet uh, society. So um, in other words, uh, internet is a vast collection of computer networks which uh, form and act as a single huge network to transport data and messages. So a little bit of uh, history of the internet, I guess uh, you may learn this from somewhere before. 1968, DAPA initiated uh, this uh, ARPANET with a military contractor named uh, BBN. Uh, this company, BBN, they are still there, they are still a military contractor. So uh, maybe uh, most people are not very familiar with them. In 1960, 70, there were only five nodes in internet. So by nodes here, we are, we're talking about like more sites, not really five computers. So only UCA, Stanford, UCSB, University of uh, Utah, BBN. So you see it starts from uh, Pac-12, right? So um, 1974, uh, Vint Cerf, uh, he co-authored the TCP specifications with uh, several others. And uh, he got a Turing Award uh, for this work in 2004. So um, at that time, the, the specification was called TCP. It was not named the TCP IP. So later, they split that into TCP IP. And uh, 10 years after that, 1984, all the, all the hosts on internet at that time, only 1,000, they all changed to use uh, TCP IP protocol all together on January 1st. So uh, here is an internet uh, growth trend. 1977, that's like uh, 10 years, nine years after DAPA initiated the project, there were only 111 hosts. Then four years later, they added uh, 100 more computers there. Uh, 
1984, the important year they switched to TCP IP, there were only one thousand hosts. And uh, 1992, we will have uh, just one million. And uh, in 2012, it is reported that, so this is from uh, folks, and this is not really from uh, Internet Society. So in 2012, it is reported that there are 8.7 billion devices connected to the internet, including your laptops, your smartphones, uh, and also all the web site servers uh, available there. And uh, with the rise of uh, Internet of Things, we are trying to collect everything to the internet. And it is expected that in 2020, there will be 40 billion devices. And uh, I think the number might be higher because this is uh, their prediction in 2012, actually. <coughs> so you can, from this figure, you can see the drastic rise here in around 2000, a little bit before 2000. So um, we're going to talk about the computer network hardware that makes everything possible. So there are basically three major categories of uh, uh, network hardware. Uh, network hosts, uh, communication mediums, and uh, networking devices. Those devices are there to help you, to help the computers to collect. They are not really hosts in the network or internet. So uh, network hosts uh, should be a uh, simple, easy concept for you to understand. So basically, um, a network host is a, a computer connected to a computer network. So it doesn't have to connect to the internet. As long as it is connected somehow to another computer forming a network, then we can call it a network host. And uh, a network host can request and also can offer information sources, resources, service, uh, and uh, applications uh, to, from, and the two other hosts on the network. So uh, your desktop is definitely a network host. And uh, so are your smartphones, your uh, smart doorknob, I don't know how to say that. And uh, your car, Tesla, and uh, Google Glass, Microsoft HoloLens and uh, Smart, SmartWatch, your PlayStation, Xbox, uh, even pacemaker. So some of the pacemaker they may not be collected directly to the internet, but you can use your phone to monitor them. So at that moment, the pacemaker and the phone form <coughs> some kind of computer network. That is why. Since they are collected, the other computer, uh, other uh, host can remotely talk with it, can access it. That's why they are subject to attack. So there have been some very interesting research on medical device security. So they attack uh, pacemakers and other, all kinds of medical devices. It's a very hot area. And also um, drones. So you use your phone to control drones and uh, like Amazon, they're proposing to use drones to uh, deliver goods, and uh, that drone is going to talk with maybe their uh, base station and uh, Amazon servers. So, uh, server is uh, is called a special concept for network host. Uh, basically, uh, like all other hosts, they are just connected to the network internet, but um, they they are more like providing some kind of service instead of uh, requesting service. So they respond to all kinds of requests across a computer network. Um, so server also, they have hardware and uh, software. And uh, in order to collect those hosts, we need some kind of communication channel. And uh, it is called a communication medias. There are all kinds of uh, mediums with different uh, speed, with different uh, bandwidth. 
Uh, we are familiar with cables, telephony lines, radio waves, uh, in, uh, even uh, infrared light beams. So the networking devices, so how, so now we have uh, hosts, we have computers, and we have uh, the communication mediums. So how do we collect them together? Do we collect them uh, one by one or together? So there is a direct link between any two uh, computers. That's a possible way to view the internet, but it will be super expensive. And uh, well, I think it's not possible. Actually, so, so there are networking devices to help us uh, form layer networks. So uh, a network can connect to another network by using those networking devices. So there are uh, several network device, networking devices, but uh, we will only cover like hub, switch, router. So no one is really using uh, hub anymore, so uh, we're we are going to talk about uh, how switch works and how a router works, because uh, you are going to use those knowledge in your uh, lab assignment. Uh, for example, uh, in the lab assignment more and the topology, if you remember, uh, we have uh, three switches, and they are forming three different computer networks. And the one of the computer, one of the hosts, we call it, uh, we call it gateway. It actually acts like a router, and uh, and uh, it has three network adapters. And there is also another router. If you remember, the router connects to the gateway and connects to the internet, which means that router has at least the two network adapters. So we have the computers, we have the communication channels, and we have. Uh, networking devices to help us uh, collect them together. Still, we need some software. So there are three major softwares uh, in a computer network. The first one, maybe the most important one, is the network protocols. This defines how computers talk with, uh, talk with each other. This is the language they are talking. But it's not really one language, it's also layered. We are going to talk about that later. And uh, so obviously we have the language, then, then we need the software to understand that language. And uh, on a host, that could be your network adapter driver, which is a kernel module, and it could be your TCP IP layer software, uh, which, uh, talk, which interprets uh, the packets and the offer services to an upper layer, and the socket functions, and the or a user space libraries. And the hot fleet uh, vulnerability we talked about previously is actually a bug in the user space library. But it's, it's really, so it is not, the hot fleet problem is not really a, a design problem in the network protocol itself. It's more like an implementation problem. So it's more like a, a software security problem, not really a network security problem. But in this class, we will focus more on the first part, the network protocol, the language. That's the core of uh, computer network security. And we're going to study the uh, vulnerabilities there. Then we also have uh, all, all those networking devices. They also need software. They have their, they have their own uh, OS, maybe customized from Linux. Uh, and for example, Cisco, they have their uh, own iOS system, uh, which is used in all the Cisco routers and uh, switches. And all those softwares uh, are also vulnerable, and they are subject to uh, any kind of attack, but they are still more like software or system, or system operating system security. Okay, so, um, so how many of you Say this figure before open six o OSI seven layer. Good. So when the computer network guys they design the network, they realize oh this is a very complicated work and uh, we cannot collect 
uh, each pair of computers directly together. We need to build a layer computer networks. And uh, they come up with this model that divide our computer uh, networks into seven layers. And there are uh, physical layer, uh, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, which uh, is a TC, normally the TCP protocols, and the network layer is the uh, IP protocol. And there are also a session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. So these uh, are the very, I would say, fine-grained model. So the current internet is not really following this model. We have a, a much uh, simplified model, which only has four layers. So basically, we combine everything here into application, and uh, we keep these two because those two are very important. And uh, we also keep those two. So it's not some, some, some textbook will say we have the internet has four layers, and some textbook will say five layers, depend, depending on if they are talking about the physical layer. Because uh, everything above here is like we can, we can implement in software. But here it's physical, you have to use hardware. So some uh, a detailed description of this o OSI model. Uh, physical layer, we're talking about network adapters. But even network adapters, on, on one network adapter, we have software. We have firmware. So, uh, and uh, the data link layer, uh, it's, it's a local organization of uh, data bits transmitted on a particular medium. So um, those two are tied with each other. So for example, the Ethernet we're talking about, uh, we have an Ethernet adapter and uh, it has a MAC address. And technically the MAC address uh, would be something uh, between physical layer and uh, a data link layer. So uh, like we said before, all the computers are connected. So one important thing for us to communicate is an identity or a name. So that is called a network address. So we are going to talk about network address uh, next week. But uh, I want, what I want to say here is at different layer, we have different network address. For example, if you're, you are running a web server, so technically the web server is at application layer. It is using HTTP. And uh, its address or identity is uh, identified by a URI or URL. But at a lower level, at the uh, transfer layer, they are using TCP, so they have a port. Port is also, we can say, the address. It's a logical port. It's not really a port on your computer. It's a logical port. So it's some kind of identity, some kind of uh, address. But it is only local to your computer. And at the network layer, we have uh, IP addresses. And the IP address, uh, normally they are local to your network. So you are not having the same IP address as another peer in your network. You guys do not share the same IP address. But different, the, the we will talk about later, there, were, there are some private networks, and uh, um, like uh, 192, and about, uh, yeah, zero, dot zero, dot zero. So, those are private uh, network IP addresses, and they can be uh, so different organizations, isolated organizations. They can all use that same IP address, and there will be no uh, confliction. And uh, going down to the physical and uh, data link layer, if we are using Ethernet, there will be MAC address, and the MAC address normally is unique. So each adapt network adapter, they have a unique MAC address. Normally it's that, MAC that. So what they do is there is a one organization, they will assign MAC address to the network adapters. And they will assign the first or maybe um, 64 byte, 64 bits to a network adapter manufacturer. And the manufacturer will use the uh, next uh, 64 bits uh, to uh, assign different MAC address to their own adapters. So um, this is what I have for today. 
So any any questions regarding the syllabus, regarding the course, everything? Yeah. Uh, last year, I was done uh, by yourself. Last year, solo. Yes. Yes. You are not going to see others. Uh, so um, in this in the lab report, um, in the lab design, we are trying to uh, add a example, if you are supposed to set up a DNS server, we are asking you to set up a DNS server and use your ASU ID or something. So we can identify actually using So the problem is we don't have a automatic system. We don't we don't want it to choose, right? So, yeah. Any other questions? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Yeah. Um, do you, 